Today is Friday, which of course means it is time for my Friday reads, and it's almost the end of the month, so that also means that in the next few days you will be seeing my wrap up and you'll be seeing my TBR. But let's get into Friday reads. So, this week I have three things that I'm currently working on. I'm hoping to finish them by Sunday, which is the last day of the month, so fingers crossed that happens, and then I can go into August with a completely fresh TBR, which will be very exciting. The first thing I'm reading on my Kindle, so I'll put a picture up of it, and it's called The Last Kingdom. This is by Bernard Cornwell. It is a historical fiction book, all based around the time of the Vikings, and we are following a young character who has been invaded by the Vikings, his father has been killed, and he is forced into a leadership role straight away, that's all I know so far because I'm only about 10% into it, but I'm liking what I've read. It's a very easy writing style and definitely one that I like and connect with. I'm hopeful that this will grow into something that I really enjoy and maybe I'll read a bit more historical fiction in future from this author. I'm actually reading this one with Paul from A Common Touch Fantasy because he mentioned he was going to read it and I thought, oh, I have that too. I will join if that's okay. And he said yes. So of course we're reading that one together and I'm very excited about it and I'm hoping that I can finish that one up today or tomorrow because it's a super easy read. The next one I have is a returning book. This one has been in a couple of Friday reads now, and that is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. It's not because I don't like it, it's because I haven't had time to get to this, but I'm 50 pages into it now. The story's starting to pick up pace a little bit and get a bit more interesting. I'm definitely intrigued by the main character now, so I think once I have the time to sit down and settle into this, I'm going to enjoy it, and hopefully that time will be today and tomorrow. I'm hopeful that all of Saturday I can just dive into these books and hopefully finish these up. It's a long one, it's 600 and something pages, but the first 50 pages did not take me long to get through. Again, really easy writing style for this one. The final one that I'm reading is actually more of a literary one, and this is Lisa McKerney's Glorious Heresies, which is published by John Murray, and this one I was given quite a long time ago actually when I went and did work experience, so I want to get to this. I recently read The Loney, which is another one of their publications, and The Countenance Divine, and I enjoyed both The Loney and The Countenance Divine, so I'm kind of edging my way a little bit into some more literary fiction stuff, and this is one of those. Um, so far, it seems like it's very crime-based. It's following a lot of different characters who all connect some way, and they all live in Ireland, I believe. I believe the author is Irish. So, so far, it's interesting, but I haven't really got into the story yet, and I'm hopeful that I'll like it when I do. So that's the final one that I'm currently reading. As always, I have a book haul for you guys, in fact quite a big one this week because quite a few books turned up and I also ordered myself a few, so let's take a look at those. The first one you may actually recognise because I've already received this book from a publisher in the UK, but the US publisher were also kind enough to send me a copy, and that is The Waking Fire by Anthony Ryan, which I will be reading in August with Michael. This is the US cover, which I just love. I mean, look at it. It's so cool. I don't usually like the US covers, but this one I really, really do. Um, so I'm very happy to have this. That means I've now got two copies of this book, and if I like it, I'm going to have a hard time choosing which one to keep because the covers are just so very beautiful. Um, I've heard good things from Che about this. She said that this was really, really a great, refreshing fantasy read. So that makes me very hopeful going into this that maybe I'll like it. Fingers crossed, because I really want to like it. It does sound like a book that I am going to be pretty intrigued by and which I think will appeal to me. So hopefully this will be a good one. The next two I was sent by Orbit. First of them is the one I requested. Imprudence by Gail Carragher. I am so incredibly happy to have this. I'm going to be reading this with Chelsea and a few other people, I think, um, in the first week of August. I can't wait to pick it up because I've been waiting for this one to come out. It's a new release, it just came out, and Gail Carragher is just fantastic. All the time I read her books and they are just wonderful. They make me laugh, they make me smile. She just has a great way of connecting you with the characters and making you just enjoy the reading experience. So this is the second one in the Custard Protocol series. I've done a review of the first one, so go and check that out if you want. It's called Prudence. This one is called Imprudence. Hopefully this one is just as good as the first, we shall see. And then when I requested Imprudence, the lady who works at Orbit actually said to me that she had another book being published that she thought I might like, and that is this one. 
the Dragon Lords Fool's Gold and it's by John Hollins and it says live for gold die by fire on the front cover and there's this rather attractive dragon being a uh, or fighting off these men in flames so it looks pretty cool I'm guessing again it's about dragons which I have no problem with you're not proposing we steal from a dragon it's not easy to live in a world ruled by dragons. The taxes are high and their control is complete. But for one group of bold adventurers, it's time to band together and steal back some of that wealth. No one ever said they were smart. Ocean's Eleven meets The Hobbit. John Holland's debut combines non-stop action, death-defying adventure, and never-before-assembled cast of wisecracking misfits. It's a worthy addition to every fantasy lover's hoard. So if that doesn't sell you on it, then I don't know what will, but that is a really good blurb. So I'm very hopeful about this. Obviously it's a debut, so we'll just have to go into it and see how it goes, but dragons are always something I find really interesting to read about, and this sounds like a pretty cool world, so hopefully I really, really like it. I will probably read this fairly soon and report back to you guys. And the final one that I was sent for review is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, which I believe is much more of a fiction book. It's not fantasy but I do think it has some mythology elements to it so that's pretty cool. It says London 1893 when Cora Seaborn's husband dies she steps into a new life as a widow with as much relief as sadness. Her marriage was not a happy one and she never suited the role of a society wife. Accompanied by her son Francis a curious and obsessive boy she leaves town for Essex where she hopes the fresh air and open space will provide the refuge they need. When they take lodgings in Colchester, rumours reach them from further up the estuary that the mythical Essex serpent, once said to roam the marshes claiming human lives, has returned to the coastal parish of Aldwinter. Cora, a keen amateur naturalist with no patience for religion or superstition, is immediately enthralled. Convinced that what the local people think is a magical beast may be a previously undiscovered species. As she sets out on its trail, she is introduced to William Ransom, Old Winter's vicar. Like Cora, Will is deeply suspicious of the rumours, but he thinks they are founded on moral panic, a flight from real faith. As he tries to calm his parishioners, he and Cora strike up an intense relationship, and although they agree on absolutely nothing, they find themselves inexorably drawn together and torn apart, eventually changing each other's lives in ways entirely unexpected. So definitely something of a departure from what I normally read but I'm definitely about mythology I think that can be really really cool so I'm hopeful that I'll like this and I've heard very good things from Mercedes and other people who read a lot more literary side of things about this book so I'm hopeful that I'll like this as well and now moving on to the stack of little books that I bought for myself because I had a little bit of a cheat week and uh, bought myself some books some of them for reasons some of them not um, <laughs> I just finished reading Among Others by Jo Walton so I really wanted to pick up another one of her books and this is the one I chose. It is Tooth and Claw by Jo Walton. I believe this one is kind of a dragon's version of Pride and Prejudice or at least that's what it was described as. So it sounds interesting. World Fantasy Award winning, that's always good. A family of dragons gathers on the occasion of the death of their father, the elder Bon Agornin. As is custom, they must eat the body. But even as Bond's last remains are polished off, his progency are vying for a position in the new hierarchy. Whilst the youngest son seeks greedy remuneration from the courts of law, the eldest son agonises over his father's scandalous deathbed confession. Whilst one daughter is torn between loyalty and her blood family and the clan she's just joined by marriage, another chooses to follow her heart, only to discover that great love begets great cost. Here is the story of political intrigue, family ties and moral quandaries set in a world of dragons. A world quite literally red in tooth and claw. That sounds promising. I'm very hopeful. Again, I seem to be picking up lots of dragon books recently, but I'm not saying that's a problem because I really like well done dragon books. So I'm hopeful that some of these will be really good. Fingers crossed. The next one I picked up on a recommendation from Giselle over at Giselle Bradley, and this is Dealing with Dragons by Patricia C. Reed. It's book one in the Enchanted Forest Chronicles, and I believe this is a middle grade or children's book series from quite a long time ago. It's a really short book, not very long at all, I think maybe 200, yeah, 220 ish pages. I'm thinking I'll probably end up reading this in August with 
Giselle who wants to do a reread of it and also with Winx. So that should be really, really fun. I'm hopeful that we'll all really like it and yeah, I can't wait to dive into it because again, more dragons. I believe this is about a princess who um, refuses to be a proper princess. She actually wants to go and live with dragons and so she runs away and she does and things ensue and then the story takes off from there I'm guessing. I do like the artwork on the cover, I must say that dragon's a pretty cool one. So very hopeful that I'll really enjoy this and I can't wait to give it a go. The next one I picked up is Luck in the Shadows by Lynn Flewelling. I was told about this by so many people. I, I put out a tweet on Twitter saying would anyone be able to recommend me any older science fiction or fantasy female writers and a lot of people suggested Lynn Flewelling. I haven't read any of her books in the past so I was definitely intrigued by how many people said they loved her stuff and a lot of people recommended this particular series which is called the Night Runner series so I had to pick it up and give it a go so I'm very intrigued it says when young Alec of Kerry is taken prisoner for a crime he did not commit he is certain that his life is at an end but one thing he never expected was his cellmate spy rogue thief and noble Sir Grill of Rimini is many things none of them predictable and when he offers to take on Alec as his apprentice things may never be the same for either of them Soon Alec is travelling roads he never knew existed towards a war he never suspected was brewing. Before long, he and Cerebral are embroiled in a sinister plot that runs deeper than either of them can imagine, and that may cost them far more than their lives if they fail. But fortune is as unpredictable as Alec's new mentor, and this time there might just be luck in the shadows. So that sounds pretty intriguing. Can't wait to give it a go. Definitely, definitely one that I want to get into. I'm trying to read a lot more older science fiction and fantasy, particularly fantasy, because I feel like I know quite a lot of the current writers in fantasy, but I don't know so many of the older ones. And when I have read older fantasy writers in the past, I've really, really enjoyed them, like Robin Hobb and J.B. Jones, and obviously Robert Jordan, people like that I have really enjoyed. So I want to go back and read a lot more of the older science fiction and fantasy. So if you do have any recommendations of older science fiction or fantasy writers who you think I might enjoy, please leave them down below so that I can look them up or add them to my wish list because I am collecting far more of these and I will be trying to slot some of these into my TBRs from now on. Continuing the theme of older fantasy writers, we have CJ Cherry. I think that's how you say it, Chera, Cherry. Um, this one is called Fortress in the Night. Apparently it's a Hugo Award winner, which is awesome. And again, this one is a classic fantasy, I'm guessing. The Shaping, a ruined tower in a vast forest is the haunted home of the world's greatest last wizard, Moriel. Here in the storm-drenched night, Moriel performs a final act of the highest old magic, the Shaping hoping that by this most wondrous of spells, the wrongs of a long-forgotten wizard war may be righted. In the tower, a boy is brought full-grown to life, named Tristan. He is neither golem or man, and to Moral's dismay, he has none of the wisdom needed to ensure the success of his last gambit of the wizard's long life. Presented with the precious book that contains the knowledge he needs, Tristan cannot understand a single word. Instead, Tristan loves his maker blindly and loves the beauty of the world. Tristan walks alone and helpless from the last outpost of the old lands into a new age of holiness rife with treachery and war. A glamour protects him until, as the veils of unknowing are blown aside by events, Tristan's power is manifest. Then Mural's enemies become his, and though Mural's book is with him always, still Tristan cannot read it. So it sounds like it's going to be a pretty interesting one. I think C.J. Cherry might have actually written some science fiction as well, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think this one is fantasy, so very intrigued, hoping that I like this a lot. And the final one I have to show you guys is this one, which I'm way overdue to read. This is Dragonflight, and it's by Anne McCaffrey. It's the first one, I believe, in her Dragons of Pern series, I hope, because I picked it up for that reason. I did research it, so fingers crossed I got it right. This cover is so old school. I mean, look at that. It's just so retro fantasy <laughs> and it's so funny again i've never read any anne mccaffrey which is so bad to admit because i'm sure so many of you guys have read and loved her books in the past i've heard nothing but good things from most people who've read them set in a medieval world of the future dragonflight tells of holds and castles and keeps and a great flight of dragons led by a golden queen and ridden by men sworn to the defense of their fantastic and incredible planet 
maps already sounds really good. The men who rode dragons were a breed apart. Chosen when dragons were first hatched, they became soulmates for life with the huge, magnificent beasts they controlled. The green, blue, brown and bronzes, beautiful, terrible, the only creatures who could defend the planet Pern from the blood red star. But without the queen, the dragons would become extinct. Only the gigantic golden queen could breed the new flights, and the queen was fading, dying, leaving behind one last huge golden egg. Dot dot dot. Sounds very cool, actually. Way more cool than I was expecting. So I cannot wait to try this one out. Didn't realise it was set in a futuristic world with old medieval stuff. Sounds very, very interesting. So that is the last one I picked up this week. I think you'll agree, I've got a pretty good stack of books that just came in this week, so I'm really excited about many of them, and you may see a few of them in my August TBR because I'm planning on reading a few of them. Let me know down below if there's any you think I should prioritise. Also, as a side note, I will be doing a bookshelf tour in celebration of my 5,000 subscribers, so part one of that should be up very soon, and I'm going to take a while doing it. I'm doing it shelf by shelf, and each shelf is going to be quite an intense edit, I think. Um, I'm going to be practising stop motion and seeing how it goes, so just uh, be gentle with me because I haven't done any stop motion for a long time. Um, so we're just going to see how it goes. But that will be happening over the next few weeks, probably as well. Um, I'm probably going to do one shelf a week or at least aim for that. So fingers crossed that happens. But thank you guys all for watching. I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye. Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book. Then come back and chat with me again.